All right, so the next one is probably uh, one of my favorites personally, being a, a software guy, uh, the Clark Wilson model. This is an integrity model and it is implemented to protect the integrity of data to ensure that proper formatting happens in the transactions. So in the book, it talks about the access triple, which we're gonna talk here in a, in a couple of seconds. Uh, it talks about having the enforcement of a separations of duty, as well as an auditing requirement uh, in this Clark Wilson model. So if you've never seen this before, or never heard of somebody uh, explaining this, this is, this is kind of neat. Let me see if I can uh, go ahead and, and try to annotate here um, to the best of my ability. So if I have, let's say, a user, and that user is wanting to access some sort of database. And just go with me. That's going to be my, my database here. Do this. Go with me here for a second. Nope. That's not what I want. All right. So we have a user, and that user is. Uh, Because that stuff's not working. I'm a good drawer. All right, so I got this user right here, right? So the user is, you know, somebody who is going to be um, using a database. And so let's say that in this database, we want to make sure that we keep the integrity of the data intact. So in our case right here, what we'll do is we'll just put little labels on it where I have a U for the user. And over here, I'll have, um, you know, the, the data. So I'll just write DB here. And so what we typically will see, and a lot of times in uh, best practice uh, in, in the business, we'll see uh, what's called a well-formed transaction. And this well-formed transaction is pretty neat if you've never seen this before, where you know user here, uh, in this particular case, the user will fill out some sort of uh, web form. Okay, so the user fills out some sort of web form and online, and they're they're, uh, they're getting ready to submit it. Uh, you know, when they submit the web form, this web form doesn't just carte blanche go to the database. It will have some things that uh, need to be done to it in order for it to uh, interact with the database. So the web form um, has these things that are called transformation procedures. And so these transformation procedures are typically after somebody cl clicks the submit button or something like that, It'll go to a transformation procedure. First, it'll do some sort of uh, you know, input validation, but it, it'll go to a transformation procedure to make sure that it adheres to whatever the format is that is acceptable for the data to be in. So if it's looking for just a, a character base, then it won't allow uh, alpha if it's just a numeric base it won't allow allow just simple letters to go into it and so that transformation procedure might kick back an error to the user or to the web form or if it's valid it'll actually go through and um, to the next step and so that transformation procedure typically will sit uh, alongside these web forms in a way that allows us to um, try to massage, if you will, the data prior to inserting it and potentially corrupting the database. So the transformation procedure will happen and that transformation procedure will then uh, talk to 
what's called the, let me type it in here, the integrity verification procedure. And this IVP here essentially sits on top of the database and allows the allows things to interact with the database uh, that are well formed in nature. So, you know, if a transformation procedure uh, is going to be accessing or sending information to the database, it has to go through some sort of rigorous test or a function that says, yes, it's valid. And then on top of the database is this uh, integrity verification procedure that's almost like a double check, if you will, that allows the consistency of these things that we put in the database that are called constraints. So a constraint is a finite amount of ways that things can be uh, entered into a database. And let's say that, for instance, a good example of that would be a social security number. Um, if I put a constraint on that social security number field in a database, that means that that constraint, it must be nine characters with numeric only. So that could be a constraint that I put in there. And those constraints, really help with those well-formed transactions to keep the consistency of the data prior to going into the database uh, at the highest level of integrity. And because of that, what we do is we put these CDIs or constrained data items inside here of the database and the integrity verification procedure will check to see if the CDIs, the constrained data items, are in fact valid. And if they are valid, it will allow it to proceed. If not, it'll kick it back and say, mm, there's an error here. You have to fix the error before you, you submit it to the database. But also, sometimes we don't need constraints. So maybe we will also just accept unconstrained data, which is not of the highest integrity. However, there will be times where we don't have constrained data sets in there. So we not only accept the constrained, the CDIs, but we also accept the UDIs or unconstrained data. Items. So with the Clark Wilson, Wilson model, again, it goes back to a primary premise here that is, in my opinion, kind of, uh, kind of neat, and uh, you can see that I'm I get kind of excited about it. Uh, but it goes back to this premise right here of a well quote unquote well formed transaction to ensure that we have constrained data items going in and out uh, to, to adhere to integrity rules for objects and transactions. So that is the Clark Wilson model in a nutshell. Any questions? Oh, that sounds like a question. Oh. That's a great question. Great question. So we had a question here that says, does the Clark Wilson model only apply to database entries? No, no. So um, that is usually, I'd say, you know, in the 20 years that I've been doing this, uh, usually, I'd say probably 95% of the implementations that I have seen where it uses something like this Clark Wilson model have been with databases. I will tell you that there have been, uh, I'm just gonna throw out a number, N 
number of tactical weapon systems that actually have something similar that is in a flat file. So if it's using like an RTOS, a real-time operating system, and it's interacting with that um, thing that moves or you know spans out um, on a turret or something, um, it will only accept very specific values in order to get it to maybe turn you know, 10 degrees or lift up 10 degrees or to, to fire something, it only accepts specific values. So having those constrained data items can also uh, both figuratively and literally fire off events. Uh, so excellent question on that. So it doesn't always have to apply to uh, database entries. It's more it focused on well-formed transactions and the integrity of those transactions. So if I'm looking for a, uh, a one and you give me a, a, a one, 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 then I'm looking for a one, you send over a one, 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 and it, it would reject it and send it back, say, nope, I only accept a one right here. So sorry, try again. You maybe send back a one one. I'm only accepting a one still. It it checks it, and uh, over time, uh, you know the 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 programs also on the client side would be constrained to only send certain values because, uh, especially with uh, systems that are um, uh, that that are having comms over geographic locations that are quickly moving. Um, we don't want any superfluous things going over the, the radios. Um, so it would, it would just be finite information that would be firing off from a uh, command and control to a um, something in theater, if that makes sense. Okay. Does that make sense? If we were in person, I would tell you a, a little bit more and get a little bit more specific, but um, maybe another day. 